Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. This is Richard Foyles Tech, and today we have the PLS Assassin 140 Digital. Is this the new king of CPU coolers in 2025? Okay, so what we have here is the PLS Assassin 140 Digital in black. Now you have requested me to actually review this, so I did ask Thermorite. They sent out the One Division as well as this at the same time. So first of all, we'll have a look what comes in the box. Okay, so this is normal. This is how all SCPU coolers come like this, exactly like this. So there's the manual. But there, this will tell you the everything how to install install everything. So if you need any installation, obviously I'll go through the installation process, but. If you need anything else this is where you start the manual okay so you're the fans now we do get a 140 for sure this is the tld 140 cb this is a four pin pwm the rpm is obviously 1500 with an sfdb bearing that's cool then we do get the 120 now it says 140 but Obviously, it's got one 140 millimeter fan. Now, these fans are standard. These are the, like the basic generic fans. And then, of course, then we've got the accessories. For sure. Okay, so this will have all your mountain brackets. It'll have the cables for the screen as well, because this one's obviously the digital version. Uh, so, here we go. Right, so. Okay, so. You do have everything in here. Uh, the back plates, the mounting, it does come with a fan splitter as well. All the bracket you need to install this as well as the fan clip. So, yeah, that's all the accessories. So, let's get this cooler out now and I'll show you it, what it looks like. Okay, so here we go. This is the cooler. Now, this is absolutely humongous. This is the biggest one I've actually seen from uh, Thermorite so far. And I've seen pretty much all the air coolers, including the... Uh, phantom spirit the 120 evo which is is considered a very big cooler as well now this is magnetized as you can see this is just a lcd screen on top so let's put that up there now as for the screen now this is obviously for temperature and monitoring of course the it's a 28 plus 27 millimeter thickness performance fans with a quad smr s uh, smart uh, digital display so that's a digital display so now, when it comes to the overall exp uh, specifications of this, now it does have six heat pipes. The dimensions are 140 millimeter by 160 by 165. 165 is the the actual height from the bottom of the cooler to the top. That's the height. It's going to be a little bit taller because of the digital display. But if you took it off, of course, it wouldn't be that big. Now, as for the sockets, this one particularly supports. It's going to be all the same ones, basically all the modern ones. So it's AM4, AM5. It's going to be uh, LGA 1851, uh, 1700, uh, 1150X. 1200 21 square uh, 2011 square and 2066 now as for the fans the 140 fan of course i've already see, said the uh model but the uh rated speed are 1500 rpm at max 77.8 cfm for the airflow the start pressure is 2.09 h uh, millimeter h2 up the decibel rating is 25.6 to be honest this is a 140 they don't run as fast as 120s and the connector is a four pin which is fantastic and it is an uh, sfdb bearing so that's cool now this one in particular is the 120 version obviously it's 20 uh, 8, 28 mil thick so it's not your standard normal standard fans are around 25 to 26 so that's yeah it's quite thick uh this one is 20 this is a uh, 1850 1850 rpm within 80 2 cfm when it comes to the airflow so start pressure is a 2.1 millimeter h2o with a 29.6 decibel reading with a four pin connector pwm and of course the bearing is an sfdb bearing so yeah so let's get this on test bench now and see how this performs against other coolers on the market right okay so when it comes to the insulation for the pls assassin 140 now you are greeted with four standoffs which you do have to place now it will have the amd logo or the am4 done on the standoffs themselves so you just got to place them there um 
There. 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 So that's it for the standoffs. Then you get the brackets. Now, these only go in one way with this specific cooler from uh, Thermal, right? So the way it goes is like this, the that direction. So all you want to really do is a little tip by here, just to save you a bit of time. Put this in there like that, put it down like that. Screw one side in. Once the thread catches, you'll be fine. That's done. And then what you do then is you do the same thing the other side. So like this, just like that, just like that. And then like that. So then all you do is screw them down. Then that's screwed down. All, they, all you've got to do then is place a bit of thermal paste in the middle. Now, of course, uh, application is going to be varied depending on what you've watched or whatever. But usually with AM5, AM4, I'd put a little bit more. But AM5 specifically, you don't have to put a lot on. So now what you want to do is grab the cooler like this. Now place it down. And you want to make sure the threads are catching by here. So then... When you take a longer screwdriver, now unfortunately they don't come with screwdrivers, so you'll have to use a long screwdriver yourself. Or get a screwdriver that has an extension, but once it's tightened down, then I'll show you to put the fans on. Right, well now the cooler is actually installed. Now what you want to do is grab the 140 fan by here, which yes, this looks very similar to what Noctua used to make. What you want to do is place the uh, clips each side. The clips are different sizes because one is for this 140 and one then is one for the 120. So what you want to do is place it in the middle, clip it in, just like that. Then you want to grab the 120, do the exact same thing by here. Don't worry about the height because the this gap here by the uh, 120 is going to be actually covered by the screen. So as for the screen, now, the screen... It only goes one way. As you can see, it's magnetic. So all you do really is place it like that on. And that is it for that part of the installation. Okay, so when it comes to connecting the screen up itself, now, as you can see by here when I zoom in, where it says USB on these headers at the bottom of your motherboard, that's where they go in to be located. That's, well, majority of motherboards that I've used over the years are located here. Now, that is where you put the screen. So the screen will come with this cable. It'll say USB on it. Now, it only goes in one direction. The actual USB logo is where it goes in. So all you do is you take it, put it into this USB header on the motherboard, and you place it there and press it in. Now, once that's done, then you have to install the software in order for the screen to work. Right, so now I'm going to show you, right, the actual, this cooler does actually come with a splitter. Now, this is the, the one that comes in the actual packaging. Now, what this is going to do is splitter the both fans, which are 4-pin PWM, and then a 4-pin PWM header is, is that. That is what a 4-pin PWM header looks like. Now, as for where it says system fan, the CPU one is going to be located more by there now as you can see it's actually drooped over the header for the cpu is actually located right there but as this is just me showing you what you want to do is plug up both of the cables to these and then just the end of this end cable manager however just place there and obviously it only goes in one way because it does have a plastic part on it and that's it for the installation of this cooler This is the Thermalrite PLS Assassin 140 Digital. This is the fan to 50% fan speed. Basically silent at 50%. Same thing, but this time at 100% fan speed. Yes, you can hear it, but to be fair, it's not loud whatsoever. 
Okay, so this is the TRCC software. Now, from what you're seeing by here is how the software is actually done. Now, all it displays really is CPU or GPU. Responsiveness is actually quite well. Just press between CPU and GPU and it does actually synchronize it quite well. Now, you can adjust the brightness. So you can turn it off and on. You can change the colors. You can change it to blue. You can change it to rainbow which is actually quite nice to be honest you can change it to a uh, monochrome breathe you can do a color cycle which will just cycle through different uh, colors now you can go according to temperature uh, according to loading and that's pretty much it for the software it's very very basic in terms of the uh, screen you get in quite honestly they could have done a bit more for, for such a big screen but that's just one of them things and quite honestly what are you going to do but other than that very basic very easy to use okay so when it comes to the overall test system i used for actually benchmarking this cooler well it is my am5 platform it's a ryzen 9 7900 32 gigs of ddr5 from aps it's got a msi b650 motherboard it's got a rx 7800 xt nitro plus from sapphire it's got a thousand watt cooling power supply and it's housed in the be quiet charabis 800 fx with four 140 light wing fans okay so when it comes to the overall room temperature of before testing and after now before testing i did have it recorded at 17 celsius and after testing it did go up to 21 celsius okay so when it comes to the overall testing now i do two tests one at 50 one at 100 percent it gives you a good uh indicator of which one is actually better now as for the 50 percent fan speed uh, results the cpu power draw was a high at 167 watts with a low at 148 cpu clocks were 5.4 at and also 5 gigahertz at low now as for the actual benchmarking cinebench are 23 the idols are 33 with a max of 88 the blender pavilion idols 33 with a max of 88 and Blender Classroom, idles 33 with a max of 88 Celsius, and 3D Mark Speed Test, idles 33 with a max of 78 Celsius. Okay, so when it comes to the overall 100% fan speed, this is with the included fans in the case as well as the cooler. Now, for the CPU power draw, the highs, though the high power draw was at 164 watts with a lower 157 now that's already a jump up in wattage when it comes to the lows now the cpu clocks we did gain something the high was at 5.4 but the low was at 5.1 so we did get a 100 megahertz boost there that does indicate better thermal so as for cinebench 23 well the idles are 34 with a max of 86 blender pavilion idles 34 with a max of 85 blender classroom idles 34 with a max of 85 and 3d mark speed test idles 34 with a max of 72 celsius okay so what you're going to see by here now is a graph it's going to show you the differences between the noctua nhd 15 gen 2 the joy shark jf 800 it's going to show you the ak620 pro and the digital the both digital pro and the pro and it's also it's going to show the peerless assassin 120 digital so what you can actually see in these graphs here is that this is very similar when it comes to thermals when it comes to compared to the not to a cooler the uh deep cool coolers they are very good as well when it comes to the overall uh temperatures but this that this one this particular cooler is actually a little bit cheaper than both coolers but this is significantly cheaper than the noctua but the 120 digital is certainly a good cooler because this is almost on par with the thermals so the graph you see here is going to give you an indicator and that these coolers are actually performed the same benchmarks same situation same case everything same test same thermal paste everything so this is the graph right here okay then guys so what did you actually think of that now yeah a lot of the results is uh quite surprising to be honest uh this is on par with the 120 from thermal right now yes the peel assassin 120 obviously is going to be the budget king it's going to keep that crown of his but 
What I'm going to tell you is that the 120 Digital is actually going to be taking the crown from the original Peerless Assassin because it's not much more in price and obviously you get a screen. Now, I'm not fond of uh, P CPU coolers with screens. I don't really see the point with CPU coolers. AIOs, that's different, but coolers... Uh, I, I, I don't understand the overall fascination with it, but obviously there's a market for it, otherwise they wouldn't be doing it. But this one in particular, yes, it's a good cooler, performs well. Uh, it's around the same as the performance uh, thermals when it comes to the Noctua uh, air cooler, which is their top flag, and this is almost uh, just over half its price which is quite mind-boggling, but Thermalright, again, they are the budget king when it comes to coolers and AIOs on this market. Now, if you guys are looking to buy Thermalright products, I will leave a link down below. This one will be specifically for all of Thermalright's products. It'll just give you, it'll just, once you hit the link, it'll just uh, take you to the Amazon link that shows all um, of Thermalright products. Just gives me a kickback if you decide to buy anything from them. And obviously it does help me out when it comes to the channel. But if you're looking to buy this, then that's great. That's up to you. But I'm not going to tell you to or yes or to or not to buy it because that's going to be completely up to you. But personally, I would go with the 120 because it's still a fantastic budget king in 2025. Now, this one won't take the the crown this time but if it does come down or go down and really down in, in price then i think it might just actually take that crown but we'll never know but currently thermal right is still the budget king when it comes to coolers and aios in this day and age which is very nice to see yeah but look all i'm going to say is i hope you guys at least enjoyed the video and please, please make sure you subscribe because I've got absolutely tons of stuff coming. Lee and Lee Build, I've got other coolers, one from Cooler Master. I've got the One Division from Thermal Right here as well. I've got cases. I've got absolute tons of stuff here, especially ones from Fantex and stuff. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. And as always, this is Rich for Welsh Tech. I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and weekend a week ahead of you. Good bye.